Hello, this is One Mana Left. Uh, a little bit back, I made an Atlas video on the way I like to play the game and the reason for it. I'm a little bit old school in the way that I like to just complete the map, rush to the boss, kill everything along the way, and then kill the boss. That's kind of the old way to play the game, but over the years, there's been a lot of league mechanics added, a lot of like bloat people sometimes call it. And throughout the addition, a lot of these old league mechanics are getting added to the core game. Uh, there's a lot of extra things you can do in a map and a lot of ways to play the game that add activities to your map. For the most part, I don't like this, and this is kind of how I've just played the game for years. I typically like to just Alk and Go map and do something that doesn't slow down my gameplay. So there's league mechanics that add a lot of time to a map. Even if they add a lot of money, they might actually make you less money per hour. Because if you have a build that can do a map in, say, 30 seconds... But then doing a full harvest takes a minute. Well, even if it doubled your amount of money made per map, it made the map take three times longer. So I like to just go uninterrupted. Don't do things like Blight. Don't do things like Legion, Abyss, Harvest. And I like to just go. I like to do maps fairly fast. I don't necessarily use a lot of Scarabs. The only ones I'll use is like Sulfite Scarabs for getting Sulfite for Delve. I don't use Delirium Orbs. But I'll show you a powerful tool that has been added this league that helps this play style of mine. So I've done this for years. I've had success with it. But this league, they added destructive play, which is a very, very good keystone for this type of play style. When they first added it, I didn't think it was actually that powerful. Because you, you honestly underestimate how many Guardian maps drop from this. But the gist of the idea is that what Destructive Play does is when Maven witnesses a boss, that means that on the Atlas, this is highlightable. That means you haven't already done the boss, so this can stay highlighted. It does count as Maven Witness. She will summon one to three additional bosses. Now, maybe this doesn't sound that overpowered, but the way you scale this mechanic is you take all of the nodes that give you extra chances to drop Guardian maps. The common one people always kind of take is the Remnant of the Past to give Shaper and Elder maps. But... You can also take the Synth map ones, and you can also take the Conqueror, the Elder Slayer map ones. And individually, these might not seem very impactful, but they kind of all multiply together. Because if you're killing four bosses, something that gives you a couple percent chance uh, starts to add up. Because that's, that couple percent chance is, I believe, also multiplied by map quantity as well. So by the time you get all this stuff stacked together, I average nearly one Guardian map per map. I've had nights where I just ran Guardian maps the entire night, and I ended the night with more Guardian maps than I, than I started. So remembering the play style that I don't like to stop along the way, you have things that slow down the map. Blight slows down the map. Ritual slows down the map. Legion, obviously. Harvest, a lot. Expedition, can't do that as low life. Abyss slows down the map. So I block all these. What that does in turn then is because it gives a 2% chance to spawn the extra encounters that you don't have blocked. Uh, if I spec into all the delirium nodes, uh, it pretty much gives me a delirium mirror like almost every map. I do a lot of delirium, but I don't actually do orbs. I just, I get like two to three orbs per mirror and they're 11 to one. So I end up just selling like five to 10 divines of mirrors at the end of a long night of mapping. Um, I farmed out 13 simulacrums last night, just in like two to three hours of mapping, and that's not using delirium orbs. That's that's just the Alk and Go random mirrors. So because blocking all the other league mechanics starts to um, all, not force delirium mirrors to spawn, but it starts to make them like 50, 60 percent, you end up getting a delirium mirror like almost every map. Oh my god, we got a Captain Lance raid midway. Alright, well this is awkward. We just had 350 people join when I'm doing a quick Atlas video here. Well, I'm going to finish the video, so uh, you guys get a, a slight YouTube sneak peek here and get to watch me screw this up. <laughs> It'll take like 5 or 10 minutes, don't worry. So, long story short, you take all the nodes that give you a chance for the end boss to drop extra maps. Guardian maps, the valuable ones. You then rush along the way, taking Delirium and taking Destructive Play. You get to the end. You have to pause for the map. You have to pause for like four seconds for Maven to say, time to up the stakes. After she does that, she will summon the extra bosses. 
Then you kill them, and hopefully you hear a bunch of tanks and hear a bunch of guardian maps drop. Uh, then you run all those guardian maps, run the bosses, get big loot, sell big loot. That's basically what I've done this whole league. And by playing that way, just pretty much pure Alk and Go, I've assembled like a 15 mirror character. So, let's see how this goes. Now that I've hyped it up, watch me not get any Delirium mirrors the entire time. So remember, we're going to go fast. Another thing here is I take Shrine Nodes. Um, just because there's some floater points. You could put the Shrine Nodes, and I have Delve Nodes as well. The Shrine and Delve Nodes are my floaters, but I like to Delve. And Shrine Nodes are like Headhunter at home. So it just, it just makes you map faster. So you could put that into a different League Mechanic, but most of the other League Mechanics slow the maps down. So that adds drag, that slows you down. That can almost hurt your money per hour, even if it increases your amount of money per map. So I just take Shrine Nodes to speed things up. You'll notice here, oh look, a Delirium Mirror. So I'll start off. I do keep Breaches unchecked, but I don't usually clear the whole thing. I usually just start it a little bit, clear it out, and then go. And then we'll spawn some Shrines. The, the good Shrine you really want is the Speed Shrine, because that makes maps go very fast. I'm going to look for my Sulfite. This whole process takes maybe like 30 seconds. You know, find the Sulfite, find the Shrines. And then eventually make my way to the boss. I don't purely boss rush, as in like I literally just beeline straight to the boss and do nothing else. Because you, you still want to kill a decent number of monsters in the map to get map sustain. And you also want to, um, you know, just get the drops. You want to find all the Sulfite. You want to find... Uh, I mean, sometimes finding the shrines can speed you up, but... Uh, watch me not find where the Dunes boss is here. Because I think I've explored pretty much the entire Dunes and not seen Hillock yet. There we go. Remember, here's the boss. You have to wait for time to up the stakes, now you can kill it. And I got a Purifier map. See? I, I don't know off the top of my head what the average Guardian map per, per map is. But I want to say it's a little under 1 normally. But it's, it's actually kind of close to 1. It's probably like like 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.7 Guardian maps per map. So you'll notice there I got 2 Delirium Orbs. That's about 40 Chaos. This is worth like 15. But, I mean, that's that's kind of just like an Alk and Go map. I'll plug a few more of these and maybe show a little variance, a little range on what you can expect for loot. Um... This one, no Delirium Mirror, but I do have Sulfite. So on Mesa, it's like the fastest map ever because you can just bum rush the boss. And you still have to wait for the Maven to summon. So I'm going to wait like three seconds. There's the other bosses. Boom. I got a Drox map and an Invite. So I'm at two maps right now with two Guardian maps. I'm at a one-to-one -one ratio so far. The map's done because Mesa is like the fastest boss rush bo map in the game. But I'm still going to go find my Sulfite. I paid for Sulfite. I'm going to get Sulfite. There we go. Now it's done. I'll show you on a guard on an Elder map uh, what the difference is too. So the different Guardian maps have different points at where they summon the, the boss. Um, on a normal map, they summon the boss right away. Pretty much right when you get to the... Right when you get to the boss, you have to wait that like four second gap. It's a little frustrating at first until you get used to the, the pausing. Honestly, if they didn't add that, it'd be too powerful. Like, it's the only downside to this whole playstyle is the waiting four seconds to kill the boss. But on uh, Elder maps, the bosses work differently because it, it kills the regular map boss, but that doesn't summon the bosses. Um, instead, you go into the Elder boss, and there's three phases of 33%. So the first phase, you can kill as fast as you want. The second phase, you can also kill as fast as you want. The third and final phase, where they appear again for the third time at 33%. Um, then you have to wait the four seconds. That's when the Elder maps summon their bonus bosses. So, there's sometimes a bit of a hiccup on these if she heals them. Because I think it's triggered by them being under 33. Because I've had it at times where they get to 33, they go into the third and final phase... And then in the meantime, she healed them back to like half, and then they don't summon. So you, I think, have to get them under 33 to guaranteed summon. Um, 
So just be mindful of that, but depending on how your build is, you have to get it to th like 32 or less, wait four seconds, and hopefully don't accidentally kill it. So there she did it instantly, so that was nice. No bonus guardians there, we're two for three. I said I thought my estimate was like 0.6 or 0.7, we'll see if that holds true. Sometimes you'll go streaks where you don't get any. Sometimes you'll have maps where you get four or even sometimes six guardian maps from the same. Like, obviously, that's rare, but it happens. So, here, I'll do a Jox one. The Elder Slayer maps, um, they're different than Elder maps because they keep the original boss inside the map. So, this Underground River will have, uh, or yeah, Underground Sea will have a Merville boss. If this was an Elder map, the Elder would kill the Merville, and then she wouldn't do the boss summoning. But on Elder Slayers, um, they do summon on the original boss, not the Elder Slayer. So whatever happens on Drox doesn't matter, because it's ultimately um, Merville, the original map boss, that's going to summon the bonus bosses. So... You only need to be mindful of the wait for a second rule right when you get to the original boss, and then you can blow up the the Elder Slayer as fast as you want. So, Merville's gonna... Since she has two phases, I can kill her first phase as fast as possible. If a boss lingers because it has phasing, you can, you know, you can wait. Um, Alright, we're on a two streak now of no Guardian maps, though. And then this Drox, I can kill as fast as I want. I didn't one-shot him. We're going to get the bonus phase. There we go. All right. So, the actual Elder Slayer you can kill as fast as possible. Um, it's the original boss on Elder Slayer maps that actually drops the, the bonus. Um, I'll maybe just show a couple of these extra. Just get a little bit more sample size. Keep talking. Uh, I might get to a 10-way. Maybe not. The 10-way the is like the final invite. Um... They're not the greatest for, like, money or profit, whatever. I know they kind of put... Oh, I'm going to go over my sulfide cap. That's unfortunate. They're kind of the the worst of all the, like, Atlas strategies. The 10 ways they buff this league, but they're not that good. Um, the thing that's good, though, is just be... you. I get a ton of mavens. If, if I map for the entire night, I will personally farm out, like, 10 to 15 mavens. And it's not from the 10 ways, though. Oh, I didn't... Okay, well, there's an example of if you kill it too fast and don't let her summon. I, I did not wait on that one for the time to up the stakes, and I killed the boss, and then I didn't get any bonuses. So, I guess there's my one example of a kill too fast, don't get bonus bosses. But, like, uh... Okay, so we're done We're done doing uh, Delve, because I'm Sulfite capped. Like I said, I'll crank out, like, five or six maps, usually just to get Sulfite capped, and go back to Delving. Um, all right, we got a Delirium Mirror on this one. One last argument for the Shrine Nodes. I, I kind of alluded to this earlier, but people oftentimes look at their Atlas tree in terms of, um, profit per map. They'll, they'll, they'll math it out and be like, oh, well, Harvest adds 35 Chaos per map. This adds X amount of Chaos per map. And they'll, they'll just purely look at it as what is the amount of Chaos added per map. The thing is, though, like, that's not the best measurement because it, it comes back to a rate of time. You want to see how much you're making, like, per hour. So it's it's not about having 100 chaos per map if the map takes five minutes. You're better off making 50 chaos per map in a one-minute map. Like, you, you have to consider both things. So my delve points and my shrine points, I would consider both of those to be floater points. They're not mandatory for this strategy. They're just what I choose. But I bet if you piece it out, I've been a little unlucky in the, the maps I've shown in this video for not getting any. But if you actually piece out the frequency of the speed shrine and like how much that actually speeds up my mapping when I do get them, it probably overall makes me map. Okay, we got... Did I get, bo did I get the bonus bosses there? Maybe I didn't. I don't remember. You, d you do have to be really mindful of accidentally killing the bosses. But there's another two Delirium Orbs, three Delirium Orbs, that's 60 Chaos. It, it, it's a hard habit to build to not accidentally kill them, but you you do get a little good at it over time. 
I'll do this last boss, and I'll do the ten way to show you. But, like I said, the ten ways aren't that good, but I'll produce, like, ten to fifteen mavens in a single night of mapping. Just because of the guardian maps. It's, it's just such a crazy high amount of guardian maps that I'm just basically chaining, um... Formed invites, Twisted invites, Elder Slayer invites, and even the Synth invites. I'm just chaining those, like, non-stop. So, because those all give, like, five or six Maven Splinters, that means, like, every set of two of those is a Maven invite. And those are worth, like, one and a half Divines. And if you if you run the Maven yourself, the average... Okay, here's a good example. This is... I got the speed trial. Like, this this certainly does make the, ma the boss... Or the map faster. Like, yeah, I got it halfway through, but especially on, like, you know, some of the maps where I get it the very first room, it does make me very fast. I, I've had maybe some, like, 13-second maps where I got the speed trial at the start of a strand or something. Okay. I'm gonna wait three or four seconds. Time to up the stakes, and then I'm gonna kill them. Alright, well, those gave me no loot because they're assholes, but... We'll see if uh, Delirium gives me anything. 111 splinters, two Delirium orbs, and... Okay. So, I've had two, three, and two for delirium orbs so far. That's probably about average. It's probably about 50 chaos on average in orbs. And then probably like, uh, you know, 20 chaos average in splinters. Um, but then a lot of the money is just all the guardian maps you generate. And then running those invites for mavens. And then running the, using the fragments you get from all those shapers and elders and cyruses and just running all those. So like... With this strategy, you're basically just bossing all the time off of, like, self-farmed fragments. Just from cranking out a bunch of bosses. I probably got a little unlucky on Guardian maps in this sample. Um, I probably did average on Delirium. A little unlucky on Shrines and uh, Guardian map drops, but... Obviously, there's variance to it. Like, sometimes, because of the double drop Atlas nodes... Sometimes you kill a boss and you literally get four to six guardian maps. You just hear all these tanks and then you get like a formed invite or something. It's like, well, shit, there's one divine just dropped. That doesn't happen that rarely. That happens like every maybe 10 or 20 maps. You get some big like multi drop like that. But anyways, this is what I've been doing for this league. I've made a lot of mirror tier items this league. Just most of my money has been from Alk and Go mapping. Just doing this strategy. Delirium boss rush and then i sprinkle in a little bit of shrines and delve because i don't i don't do anything that slows down the map i just complete the map in the fastest way possible and everything i'm adding to the map adds income without slowing the map down like the only thing that actually slows it down is the waiting four seconds on the boss everything else doesn't slow the map down i am assuming this will still be in the game in 323 they just added it this league i don't see any reason for nerfs so hopefully this still works next league and hopefully some of you guys join in and make some money off this.